And now, Joe Bob Summer School and the Surgeon on TNT. Ah, wasn't that sweet? That movie didn't make a lick of sense, I tell you. Where did that father business come from? Kenneth Branagh causes the creature nothing but pain and heartache and refuses to give him the girl. And by the way, given the way she looks, I'm glad Frankenstein wasn't specializing in plastic surgery back in med school. So anyway, then the creature gets all weepy when he dies. Kenneth Branagh wasn't his father. John Cleese's father was his father. Or Dr. De Niro's father was his father, depending on whether you think the soul resides in the brain or the body. Speaking of which, I know where the soul of the bride of Joe Bob resides, definitely in the body. So let me just add a few final ingredients here. We have deodorant, and we have hairspray. And uh, so let's just kind of, you know, take care of her here. And of course, and of course, the final ingredient, a little bit of this. Ah, okay. Let's turn her on. Yeah. Live, come on. Come on, live. 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 Well, um, um, hello. Um, <laughs> I'll be right with you. Um, before I consummate my marriage here, um, I want to let you know that next week's class here at Joe Bob's Summer School is uh, Pop Culture 201, where I'll be lecturing on the road movie uh, while showing the classic uh, Blues Brothers, along with your favorite movie uh, uh, um, about a nerd who loses his bicycle, uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Um, right now, though, uh, it's time for uh, part two <laughs> of uh, Pre-Med 101, featuring a movie made in, in, in 1994, the same year as, as Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, and uh, that, that didn't quite get as much press. It's that uh, classic tale of a mad scientist who, who witnesses his brother's death as a child and uh, years later starts crawling around through hospital air ducts, jabbing anyone who gives him attitude with an elephant-sized hypodermic and making their veins explode all over the place. So uh, I'm uh, talking about, of course, the surgeon. So let's do those drive-in totals and get it started. We have 12 dead bodies, uh, one dead baboon, uh, one breast, keep your eyes peeled, uh, one tracheotomy, uh, hand rearranging, a thumbectomy, one motor vehicle pedestrian collision, strangling, lip sewing, bitch slapping, hand stabbing, needle to the eyeball, needle to the brain, knife to the chest, sharp thingy through the chest, four gallons of blood, gratuitous swimming pool makeout session, carbon dioxide foo, electroshock therapy foo, three stars. Check it out and I'll be discussing various surgical techniques with our guest lecturer, Dr. Ken Saporin, as we go along. <sighs> Honey, I believe Professor Joe Bob's gonna have to see you after school. No, I'm not your dad. Uh, yeah, I'm your daddy. Uh, <laughs> come with me. <laughs> Back to Joe Bob Summer School and the Surgeon on TNT. Well, did you see it? In the foreground, biggest day? It's not often that TNT lets a hooter get by like that. I think they were distracted by the woman's veins bursting under her skin or something. Because that was one of the grossest scenes I've seen since the one in Blood-Sucking Freaks. Remember that movie involving an unnatural sex act with a decapitated head? But let's not get sidetracked. Because speaking of hooters, our special guest lecturer is here. And uh, he's a well-respected Beverly Hills plastic and reconstructive surgeon who's graciously agreed to join us and answer our questions about the many procedures that he performs, Dr. Kenneth Saporin. Welcome, doctor, Thank and uh, welcome to Joe Bob's Summer School. And uh, so what's available these days for the woman who wants to, you know, live up to her full potential? 
Well, basically everything's available, depending on you can where work they on want every to start. square inch of that body, right? From head to toe. Okay, well, let's start with uh, breast augmentation. That's that gets the most publicity. I, I don't know. That just came to mind since it relates to the scene that we just watched. And uh, right. you like that for an excuse? I'm getting your mentality. All right. <laughs> okay. What are the different techniques for breast augmentation, and which one can a woman use for the most? natural effect because that's what they go for now is they want to be natural well i want my breasts to be different but i want to be natural right well not everyone but the majority of women want to be natural but you'd be surprised to how many women actually request almost an unnatural look some women want it, it depends on whether they want roundness or fullness at the top of their breast which is the more augmented look whether or, or opposed to a natural sloping breast did you ever see a girl named Tiffany Towers that works at the Cheetah Club in Atlanta? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm really, really, I'm asking no. you this question because some of these girls get them so big. I've never that, been they, to Atlanta. Well, but. okay, all right, all right. Well, they, she works in L.A. too, but they want There's them There's a lot of Tiffany's around. Okay. <laughs> they want them for professional right. reasons. They get them, like, for right. business well, that's, reasons. Sure, and, I mean, you have to, that's what I'm saying. And from my perspective, every case needs to be individualized and you the the operation is only as good as really what you have to start with all right well i understand you brought some visual aids with you can you can you show us what your what your working materials sure. are sure well the current uh implants in use today are really mostly saline implants and these are two saline implants this is yeah. a smooth round implant which is can I? one option please don't <laughs> squeeze too. you can play but don't play okay. too long with it <laughs> and and uh that's a smooth round saline implant okay. and this is a anatomic textured implant what's the difference so well the difference is purportedly this anatomic implant is a more natural appearing implant once it's placed in the pocket underneath either the breast tissue or underneath the muscle. Yeah. It, you can see that there's more fill down oh. here in the lower aspect of the implant than there is up here. And supposedly it should give you a, a more gradual uh, projecting breast. Whereas a round implant gives you a little bit more fullness superiorly. I like to use a round implant in patients whose, whose breasts are sort of drooping and so they need more fullness at the top. Whereas someone who's really small um, I prefer to use an anatomic implant, but, you know, it, it all it depends that, upon the what consultation. What is that huge one on your knee? This, <laughs> this is a silicone implant, and it's actually... Are um, those illegal now? No, they're not illegal. Oh, they're not. Um, there um, are certain protocols that need to be followed to use them now. Usually, they're used in breast reconstruction. Uh, or if a woman has silicone implants in already and she wants them removed and replaced with other silicone implants, or if you're doing a little minor um, raising of the breast, you can use a silicone implant. But silicone implants have actually um, kind of gotten a bad rap. I mean, I think there are local problems with it, but even recently papers have uh, been published that uh, kind of uh, take the silicone off the hook in terms of relationship between the silicone and systemic diseases like arthritis or connective tissue diseases. So I think they're they're safe. Yeah. Well, how can you encourage women who are considering breast augmentation, but but they're like they're like on the fence? If someone is on the fence, I think getting in and talking to someone who can tell them all the different alternatives that exist today and what the state of the art is that they would understand that it. It, you know, it is an elective procedure. There are certain risks, but generally, I think it's a safe and effective operation. Okay, well, you heard what he says. All I have to say to those women is, big is beautiful. Okay, let's get back to the flick, and we'll talk more with Dr. Saporin at the next break. He knows I'm kidding. Okay, you screwed up again, didn't you? It's your fifth year in junior college. Your life has no possibility of improving. Not true if you attend yet another session of Joe Bob's Summer School. Nine brain-expanding Saturday nights good for actual credit at Southern Arizona State Community College at Ajo. But you need to enroll your hiney. To register, you got to go to the Summer School website and get a syllabus. Plus, you'll be able to see who some of our guest lecturers are this summer. And you'll also get a sneak peek at a few of the final exam questions. And you can even include yourself in our summer yearbook, listing your worst subject and favorite hobbies. The internet address for Joe Bob's Summer School is tnt.turner.com forward slash summer school. 
That doesn't mean you can skip the dang class. Of course, even academic probation is fun at Joe Bob Summer School Saturday nights on Turner National Technical Institute. Visit Joe Bob Summer School at tnt.turner.com forward slash summer school. Back to Joe Bob Summer School and the Surgeon on TNT. Wow, Malcolm McDowell dies in the second reel again. You know, you got to think he's making these deals on purpose. He says, what, you want to pay me a half million? OK, but would you kill me off quick because I got to be in Aspen next week or something? <laughs> he's always dead by the second reel. It's pre-midnight here at Joe Bob Summer School, and we're here with our guest lecturer, plastic surgeon Kenneth Saporin. And uh, Ken, let's talk about the plastic surgery men are getting. Now, I don't need it, of course, but okay, I, I, I got to ask you a okay. question. I mean, can you tell me how you use that device? Because, I mean, I've, I, I've been a doctor for a while. I went through medical school. I've never used one of those. I don't, I mean, maybe I could learn something from being here. Really? You've never yeah. worn these in, no, in your whole, no. your whole medical looks, career? It looks see, like a hole in a piece of glass. We think we're being so dang authentic on Joe Bob Summer School. And here I am, I've just got like a miner's lamp on my head or something. But I just thought I'd ask you, are plastic surgeons the ones who do penile implants no general i'm generally that's done by urologists oh penile implants oh. now that's there's a difference between a penile implant and a penile enlargement a, a penile well, okay. implant can be used <laughs> penile implant can be used for impotence um and yes. it's it's a device not too dissimilar to a breast implant which can be inflated or deflated to mimic the, uh, the natural uh, rising and falling. What do you we use say? to inflate it? Is you know, saline. Like, well, there's there's usually a up, port. Yeah. There's a port that you can press, which will cause the saline to enter the implant. Oh, like and a little pump? Yeah, exactly. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you don't do those. No, no. Why don't you do those? I. I'm not trained to do those, nor is it an interest to mine. Oh, okay. Well, I don't blame you. I don't blame you at all. Okay. Here's my next question for the men. Um, uh, what are we doing about baldness? Um, well, there's a lot of uh, options in terms of baldness right now. The simplest thing is to ignore it. Um, and as you progress from there, there's medical management of baldness, and that includes Rogaine, which is... And, that works. And not, I guess I'm a pretty good example of the things that don't work. But <laughs> Rogaine, which is a topical um, ointment, and that needs to be applied twice a day, and it doesn't give you the, the best results. It, from there, there's another medication, which is normal medication, which is called Propecia. And that's a pill that you take once a day. And I've seen variable results with that. I've had some patients who've had excellent hair growth and uh, almost uh, an amazing transformation. And then I've had patients who really didn't have that much of an effect at all. You and, ever and take it, those before and after pictures of your of your uh, oh, plug work? Oh, sure. That's probably not the right word for it, but sure. But, yeah, uh, I appreciate for, that. For uh, uh, you know, you know, hair like restoration, hair club for yeah. men pictures. You know, oh, where yeah. you have the guy, sure. and that. And, and are they dramatic? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're okay. very dramatic. And I think the technique has evolved to the point where it's, it's easy and it's very natural, um, depending, once again, on, on what you're starting with and how much you have to work with. Okay, what other kind of things are men having done? Well, I, obviously the, the most common procedure that a man undergoes is hair restoration. But liposuction is also you know, fairly common amongst men, yes, and, and the love handles. Uh -huh. yeah, I noticed you're wearing a loose shirt. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> you know. You know, rhinoplasty, um, uh -huh. nose job, uh, is, is something that's popular among men, but uh, I would say those three are, are the most common procedures for men. All right, well, let's watch some more of the flick, and we'll get back to this at the next break, but um, what about those, uh, those uh, pectoral implants? Do you think I could do with some... Uh, well, what could I get for like? We'd have to get them custom made, but yeah, <laughs> you do those though. Yeah, pectoral implants. Yeah, not not commonly. It's not a common. What procedure. could I get for like uh, two hundred bucks? <laughs> Maybe a little um, laser hair removal of your left ear. Or... Oh, okay. <laughs> both ears. You know, both ears. Like one one nipple. Both for two hundred bucks. <laughs> 
First, there was my TNT Monster Vision website with the famous caption contest, which is still going strong, I might add. Then we added the incredibly sexy Monster Vision t-shirt, coveted by would-be prize winners everywhere. Then we added the Find That Flick contest, in which you can win all kinds of free junk just by knowing the plots of weird movies. And now we proudly present Joe Bob's Summer School website, which is the perfect companion to my summer-long movie lineup on TNT. Well, not the perfect companion. Jennifer Lopez would be the perfect companion. But my point is, I'm slowly building an empire here at TNT. It's no longer possible to take me lightly. And I'll take just as much time as I want with this promo. OK, to find out your class assignments and guest lecturers, get on the information superhighway and drive to tnt.turner.com forward slash summer school. And enroll at Joe Bob Summer School now at tnt.turner.com forward slash summer school. Back to Joe Bob Summer School and the Surgeon on TNT. Ouch! Yale School of Drama graduate Sean Haberly as the psychotic Dr. Matar doing the medical procedure known as slamming your hand in a drawer. And of course, we all recognize Peter Boyle as Lieutenant McElwain. Peter Boyle, the only monk turned sitcom star that I know of, currently in Everybody Loves Raymond by way of Taxi Driver and Beyond the Poseidon Adventure guy with some range. All right, as you know, it's pre-med 101 night, and we're still here with our guest lecturer, plastic surgeon, Dr. Kenneth, Kenneth Saporin. So, Doc, do women come in with pictures of celebrities and models, and they say, uh, I want to look like this? Yeah, um, that's not uncommon. Yeah. Um, what look is the most popular right now? Who do they come in and show you? Well, it, you know, it depends on what type of procedure they're interested in. Um, you know, obviously, um, Women who are interested in breast augmentation oftentimes bring pictures from either Victoria's Secrets or Playboy or whatever a magazine that they like to read. But no it, particular model? No, no particular model really, really comes to mind, no. I know lip jobs are, are really big. Well, I call them lip jobs. I, I use all the technical terms <laughs> with you, doctor. But, but I've been noticing women here and there whose, that, whose lips are a little out of whack, like like one side is a sofa cushion and the other side is a beanbag chair, you know? <laughs> and what's going on there? You mean they, like they, upper versus lower or both? Oh, this no, different like side, side to upper. side, they're that, like yeah, not that's, quite lined up. Well, there's different forms of lip augmentation and you could either use the patient's own tissue, which is autologous tissue, meaning taking fat from somewhere else, which they love that, it's easy to sell them on removing the fat, <laughs> yeah. but then injecting it in the lip is, is a whole nother story, but the it, the technique has advanced to the point where some people are getting very nice results with injecting autologous fat and getting it to stay at least about 75% of it permanently. There's also other tissues that I should tell you that you can put in there. There's Gore-Tex. Um, Gore-Tex? Yeah. That's, that's what they make ski jackets out of. They do, but that you could also put it in your in your lips as well really and yeah. you would be very and, warm the rest of yeah. your life wouldn't you yes <laughs> and, but it still applies don't eat the yellow snow no matter what. <laughs> okay let me ask you this now be honest with me when a patient of yours is married i mean you're you're in beverly hills you're in the heart of beverly hills a lot of guys in beverly hills they've got trophy wives okay the heart of they beverly. come in is it generally the woman or her husband who wants her to get the surgery they come in together right I mean, that's, you have situations like no, that, Yeah, you right? certainly have. Well, I wouldn't want to operate on someone who wasn't motivated by, by themselves. Yeah. I don't think you are likely to get a successful result when someone is mototivated by somebody else. And I think it's important. You mean it won't work? The plastic surgery no, won't work? No, the plastic surgery will not... work. But I think the, the psyche of the patient, especially of a cosmetic plastic surgery patient, is very important in terms of the final outcome. And if someone is not self-motivated, but motivated by someone else or something, some extraneous force, I, I, I'm very wary of that type of patient. So I yeah. like to have patients who want something for themselves. Okay, well, all right, that was a good answer, Doc. <laughs> okay, we're gonna get back to the surgeon. And uh, Dr. Sporting, can you stick around a little bit longer? Because I have a few more things to ask you. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. I, I, I know you probably can't. Oh, I, I want to ask you this. You, I know you can't name names because that would be against your Hippocratic oath and everything. But just answer yes or no. Do you have any celebrity patients? Yes. Which ones? <laughs> <laughs> Back.
back to Joe Bob Summer School and the Surgeon on TNT. Did the psycho surgeon just kill Mother Love? <laughs> Outstanding, you know? Mother Love, she's, she's a good actress, but she's getting really famous these days with that syndicated show, Forgive or Forget, where these people come on and tell a story about why they no longer speak to their sister because they slept with her husband or something. And then they walk over to this big door, and if the sister forgives them, then she walks through the door and they hug. And if she doesn't forgive them, it's just the person standing alone on the stage. <laughs> Talk about your cruel TV moment on the Mother Love Show. Anyhow, Beverly Hills plastic surgeon Kenneth Saporin is our guest lecturer. And uh, do you do reconstructive surgery after car accidents and stuff? Yes. Yeah. Occasionally? It's... You want to share with us the most gruesome assignment you've ever had? Well, I've done a lot of um, grotesque work, and I've had been involved in the care of patients who've had terrible accidents from, you know, very compound, complex lower extremity fractures with exposed bone and lost tissue, and, um, but I would have to say the most aff affected I've ever been in a case was, uh, actually reattaching a penis. Really? Yeah. Was that successful? Yes. And what was your job? What was your part of it? <laughs> um, I actually sewed the, the small blood vessels back together to reestablish the blood supply. And is that penis in good working condition today? You know, I don't really know exactly <laughs> the details. But yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's viable. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have complete sensation. And it uh, doesn't get erect at this time. But oh. it's there, and he's able to use it for other things. OK, well, I want to ask you this, because this just came out in the National Enquirer. Liposuction secrets of the stars. Now, I'm not implying that you have anything to do with this article. But uh, the, the National Enquirer, like, took all these pictures of all these people who had lipos, or, or who had liposuction recently, and then just because it is the National Enquirer, they just took pictures of people that they think need liposuction. <laughs> and, uh, and those are actually fairly interesting. Now, there's a, I don't want to show this, you know, because it would be cruel, but there's a picture here of Val Kilmer. Uh, could you help him out? Would you, would you recommend liposuction for Val? I, I wouldn't recommend it unless he wanted it, but I, I think there's room for improvement. So, so if there's just like a gut, a, a major, major gut, is that a good way to do it, or do you, why, why don't you? Why don't? Why wouldn't a doctor just tell somebody go to the gym, get to the gym, bud? I, I do that sometimes. Yeah. yeah I mean, it, once again, everything needs to be individualized, and okay. it depends upon the patient, their motivations, the extent of the problem. Is it an overall? body habitus with total morbid obesity or their localized fat collection. Total that... morbid obesity. <laughs> that, that's a term I haven't heard before. Morbid obesity? Is that a medical term? Oh, yeah. Morbid mm -hmm. obesity? And what, what is that? Is that like that guy in Brooklyn that can't get out of his house because he's too big to go through the door, that stuff? That's very morbid. Yeah, but, <laughs> but I mean, even, even sort of morbid yeah. would be... I mean, the, the strict definition is above... I, I'm not even 100% sure right now, but like over 50% of your ideal body weight is considered... Over 50%? So if your ideal weight is 150, it would be like 225 would be morbid obesity? No, no. Well, maybe it's 100% <laughs> oh, so of your ideal would be body like weight. 300, but... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what model of Mercedes do you drive, Dr. Sephora? <laughs> I'm kidding. A little good-natured teasing, okay? Let's get back to the movie. And, um... You got the leather interior and everything. I know. It's a Jaguar, isn't it? <laughs> Want to win a free video of some obscure horror movie you've never heard of that some guy in West Virginia made in his basement? Of course you do. That's why umpteen jillion people have discovered our Find That Flick contest. If you've never heard of it, forget it. It's too complicated to explain on TV. But you can find out all about it on our MonsterVision website at tnt.turner.com forward slash MonsterVision. And I'll give you one clue. If you're one of those guys who never leaves his apartment except to rent videos, this contest was designed to give heretofore unrealized meaning to your life. Play the Find That Flick contest at tnt.turner.com forward slash monster vision. 
back to Joe Bob Summer School and the Surgeon on TNT. Do they really make hypodermic needles that big, or is that just movie magic hypos? Because cinematic psycho hypos, you know, that thing was like, whew. I like the way they know exactly what the psycho is thinking. You know, he's collecting pituitary extract, of course. And uh, I see the filmmakers here utilize the 26th rule of filmmaking. All buildings have a system of air ducts which run throughout them, allowing anyone access to any part of the building at all times. Okay, well, wait, I can ask you, Doc, do they really make hypodermic needles the size of bicycle pumps? Are there hypos <laughs> that are this big? No, I've never used one. Never seen one, okay. <laughs> Dr. Saporin, I want to thank you so much for being here at Joe Bob's Summer School, we give each of our guest lecturers a book as a parting gift. This is a tradition here, and we got, we got one. I think you're gonna enjoy this. It's a, it's a Harlequin super romance, not just a Harlequin romance, but a Harlequin super romance called Falling for the Doctor. And you haven't already read this, have you? No. <laughs> okay, so uh, there you go. Thank, Thank you for being with us. And by the way, how many, how many plastic surgeons, how many plastic surgeons date their patients? I hope oh, I wouldn't go there. You wouldn't go there because I know I've heard these stories. Come on, no, I, no, no, never, ever. I, I would wait a long time after the after plastic they surgery. were a patient. What? I, it just, I, how many plastic? You can get into big trouble right. there. You really? Sure. How many plastic surgeons have married their patients? I'm sh I'm sure there's some out there, but I I. Don't have any exact numbers on it. It's not, a, it's not published in the journals. So. Okay. You think it's a bad idea. <laughs> I don't believe you for a minute. Okay. Thanks again for being here. We're going to go back to the flick now. And uh, he's collecting pituitary extract. How did they know that? I couldn't even figure that out, and I'm certified. I'm certified by the American Board of, you know, Peripheral Care Division, Northwest Wing. Ask for Mary Lou. <laughs> when you enter the caption contest and you don't win, do not write us a letter saying his caption sucks. Let's be good sports about this, okay? After all, the only reason you're so angry is that the stakes are so low. One measly Monster Vision t-shirt. Because if the prize is that cheap and you don't win it, it kind of brings into question your potential in all areas, right? But let's not dwell on that. If you think your caption is hilarious, then come on down to the website and try to make the six-headed jury laugh. That address is tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision. And here's a tip. Think sixth grade humor. We love that. Try to win a free t-shirt in our caption contest on the one and only Monster Vision website at tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision. Back to Joe Bob Summer School and the Surgeon on TNT. Well, the lip sewing was a nice touch, wasn't it? And uh, having the psycho surgeon be the ex-boyfriend of Isabel Glasser, that's not bad either, because we know what ex-boyfriends will do, don't we? But is this movie slowing down, or is it just me? How many scenes in the, in the air ducts have we had? 18, 20 scenes in the air ducts. I love when he walks into the middle of the cafeteria, though, with that big needle, and he injects the jello without anybody seeing him. Talk about suspense. And that last part also had my favorite line while he's sewing up the guy's lips. No more boring speeches from you, Ed. <laughs> okay, time for the thrilling climax to The Surgeon. Go. We haven't talked about hospital food tonight, have we? I have just one word for those of you who have to eat that stuff. Esophago-gastro-duodenoscopy. <laughs> Ask for it by name. Back to Joe Bob Summer School and the Surgeon on TNT. Very nice final scene with the final image of the smashed hypo. And I love the scene where he had the bone saw and she had the defibrillator and they were discussing what went wrong with the relationship. <laughs> We've all been there, right? But at the very end, did the good guy die? Is James Remar dead? That's against the rules. You can't have the love interest hang in there through the whole movie and then waste him in the last five seconds. That's like having an aortocoronary bypass with combined right and left cardiac catheterizations and then choking on an M&M. <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about? You know. Okay, I want to thank our guest lecturer, Dr. Kenneth Saporin, and the 
Bride of Joe Bob here for waiting so nicely for me to finish the show. And uh, also, let me remind you that next week's class here at Joe Bob's Summer School is Pop Culture 201, specifically the supreme importance of Route 66 in American iconography. And we'll be watching two nouveau classic road movies, The Blues Brothers and Pee Wee's Big Adventure, because if Pee Wee Herman's not college course material, I don't know what it is, right? All right, you uh, remember what I taught you, honey? I'm sorry, I left the toilet seat down, Joe Bob. I will leave it up from now on. Good girl, okay. <laughs> and that's it for me, Professor Joe Bob Briggs, reminding you that if your dog is fat, you aren't getting enough exercise. Did you guys hear the one about the middle-aged woman who has a heart attack? She's uh, taken to the hospital, and while she's on the operating table, she has a near-death experience. And she sees God, and she asks God, is this it? And God says, no, you have another 43 years, two months, and eight days to live. So the woman recovers, and she decides to stay in the hospital and have a facelift, liposuction, breast augmentation, and a tummy tuck. And she even has somebody come in and color her hair, thinking that since she has so much more time to live, she might as well make the most of it. So she gets out of the hospital after the last operation, and while she's crossing the street, she's hit by a car and is killed instantly. And she goes to heaven and she says to God, I thought you said I had another 43 years to live. And God says, I didn't recognize you. <laughs> Joe Bob Briggs reminding you that the drive-in will never die. Okay, a woman is on her deathbed. And her husband is maintain maintaining a vigil by her side. He holds her hand and tears run down his face and they, his tears splash onto her face and they wake her up. And she looks at him, and her lips begin to move. And she whispers, my, my darling husband. And the husband says, hush, my love, go back to sleep. She won't talk. But she insists, she says, I, I have to talk to you. I, I have something I have to confess to you. And the husband says, there's nothing to confess. It's all right. Everything's all right. So just go to sleep now. And the woman says, no, no, I must, I must die in peace. I slept with your brother. I slept with your best friend. And I slept with your father. And the husband manages a pain smile and he strokes her hand and he says, hush now, don't torment yourself. I know all about that. Why do you think I poisoned you? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have fun, aren't we?